Ahoy there, beautiful soul. We've got another really fun one for you today. It's one of the most mind-blowing pieces of content we've seen in a long time, and it's such an honor to share it with you. This is an exclusive episode from Gaia called The Masters of the Net, diving deep into the 40 years of research by Dr. Robert Gilbert, PhD, a former nuclear biological chemical defense Marine Corps instructor who went through his own awakening and became the founder of the Vesica Institute for Holistic Studies. His work, as you'll soon see, offers a new way of understanding the invisible energy matrix that underlies everything in the physical world. While the mainstream understanding of reality has been largely restricted by the materialistic worldview, each day there is an ever-growing body of research that suggests that we can understand the underlying foundation of existence in an entirely new way. And by this understanding, we may become free to live harmoniously with ourselves and the whole world. Once this episode is complete, if you enjoyed it, please check out the rest of this series on Gaia using the link in the description. It's definitely worth it. Enjoy. There is a pattern behind everything in your life. It's pain or pleasure, happiness or misery, success or failure. The hidden key to self-empowerment is the knowledge of these patterns which direct our lives. Sacred geometry teaches the master patterns which create our world and which are the true secret behind all manifestation. This series removes the veils of previously hidden knowledge. You will learn key subtle energy patterns which, when activated regularly in your own energy field, can change your life. Welcome. I'm your host, Dr. Robert J. Gilbert, founder of the Vesica Institute for Holistic Studies. For over 40 years, I have intensively researched the patterns behind human life. This includes scientific studies from my time as a U.S. Marine Corps instructor in the field of nuclear, biological, chemical warfare defense, and studies of spiritual traditions around the world while completing my PhD in international studies. I'm excited to share with you in this series some of the highlights of these 40 years of research. We will explore together the hidden patterns which manifest everything in physical existence. This is a journey of empowerment. By learning how to work with subtle energy patterns known to ancient traditions, you can initiate an alchemical transformation within yourself. This process can empower your individual evolution of consciousness and thereby assist the raising of consciousness on our planet. We begin with a hidden lineage of initiates known in ancient Egypt as the Masters of the Net. These initiates knew a great secret that behind everything in physical existence is an invisible matrix of energy, which is the source of all physical manifestation. It is this invisible energy matrix which materializes everything in the physical world through the patterns we call sacred geometry. The term sacred geometry is comprised of geo, meaning earth, and metri, meaning measurement. Sacred geometry literally means the sacred measure of the earth. We can also think of this in a larger sense of sacred geometry meaning the divine blueprints of consciousness and energy. In the ancient world, all of the temples, monuments, and political power centers were built on the larger power spots of the Earth's energy grid and were used for establishing the exact placement of the central axis of the building, the walls, the altars, and all the other features in sacred buildings. The ancients knew that many of these large-scale earth grids are connected to the sacred geometry patterns we know today as the Platonic solids. They're called Platonic solids because they appeared in the writings of Plato 2,500 years ago. However, these forms were known in ancient temple sciences long before the time of Plato. The Platonic solids are the geometric forms which correspond to the four elements of earth, water, air, and fire. 
Then there is the form of the fifth element, the universal life force, which the Greeks called ether and was known as chi, ki, prana, and other names in different traditions. This is the fifth and final platonic solid. This fifth element form is the 12-sided dodecahedron, which was considered sacred and sometimes secret in the Greek tradition. Plato hints at it when he described the earth as looking from above like a 12-sided ball. In ancient traditions, both the earth and the entire universe were considered to have the form of a dodecahedron. It's easy to see why over the entrance to Plato's initiation school, there was said to be a sign which read, no one ignorant of geometry may enter. In the 1970s, Ivan Sanderson wrote an article showing the geometric locations of physical anomalies on the Earth. The most famous of these locations is the Devil's Triangle around Bermuda. However, Sanderson found that there was a geometric pattern of similar sites all around the globe. Sanderson found these locations were at the nodal points of the platonic solid known as the icosahedron. As we will see in a later episode of this series, the icosahedron is not only the sacred geometry shape for this part of the energy grid of the Earth, it is also known in science today as a key biological form, which appears, for example, in the geometric form of viruses, the most basic form of life. Researchers discovered that to make these earth grid maps align properly to these sacred geometry patterns, point number one of the grid needed to be aligned to one of the world's great large-scale power spots, Giza Plateau in Egypt. And so it is here, in the civilization of ancient Egypt, built on this primary power spot of the earth grid, that we will find evidence of an ancient initiation system based on the invisible energy grids, which in ancient texts are often referred to as nets or the net. In India, for example, the jeweled net of Indra is described as a net extending infinitely in all directions, with jewels which glitter like stars at every nodal point of the net. Every jewel reflects all the other jewels in itself. Other interpretations include that every bright jewel at the nodal points of the net is an Atman, which is the spirit core within human beings and all spiritual beings. Each Atman spirit core has the same divine essence as all others, but with their own unique qualities based on the karma they have generated through acting in the physical world. In the highest levels of modern physics, it is understood that physical matter is based on both physical particles in different states of vibration and on waves. Waves can collapse into particles. Particles can disintegrate back into waves. This is called wave-particle duality in modern physics. Similarly, ancient traditions based both their understanding of natural forces and their healing methods on dynamic vital energy not on the physical matter itself, which is simply a lower, denser manifestation of the underlying energy patterns. Ancient traditions understood that energy in different states is the core of all existence. This brings us to an important secret of sacred geometry. Whenever you see a physical form, including the forms of sacred geometry we will explore in this series, don't think of it as a solid, inert structure Always keep in mind that what stands behind this physical structure is the net, the vibrational matrix of energy that this form crystallized out of. Remember that the physical form can change immediately when the background energy matrix changes. Everything is energy, so sacred geometry patterns are crystallized forms showing us the invisible vibrational matrix, which is the higher reality. This vibrational matrix is the net, which ancient traditions learned to master. Understanding that the solidity of physical matter is an illusion, that it can change based on changing the vibrational matrix behind matter, is the secret of all advanced energy healing and what we call today 
vibrational medicine. It is also the secret of all advanced spiritual activation of the human being. These nets or energy grids work on higher plane levels in addition to their work on the physical plane to create physical form. Modern physics has allowed materialism to restrict its understanding of this larger reality so that modern materialism only sees energy manifesting at two levels, the electromagnetic and the physical levels. One of the most popular models of these higher planes today is the seven planes model from the Theosophical Society. This image of the seven planes of nature is derived from the modern system of biogeometry developed by Dr. Ibrahim Karim in Cairo, Egypt. Dr. Karim found the geometric shapes which connect in resonance to each plane, which makes possible very advanced work in testing or directing energy to these planes. We will discuss biogeometry in more detail in the final episode of this season. Working with higher planes along with the net of the vibrational matrix is a key secret of spiritual initiation. This makes possible advanced applications in manifestation, prosperity work, and the materialization of energy and thought forms into physical reality. It is all about knowing how to work with the patterns of energy which move from the higher planes of consciousness into vibrational matrices and then crystallize into physical manifestation. Modern materialistic science doesn't allow itself to consider any planes above the physical plane. It bans any discussion of metaphysics just as dogmatically as any fundamentalist religion enforces the suppression of heretical ideas. Instead, modern science talks about dimensions rather than higher planes. Modern advanced physics is full of higher dimensions. In fact, modern physics requires the existence of many higher dimensions in order for the mathematics of quantum physics to work out. But despite these higher dimensions in physics equations, materialistic science continues to insist that this is simply a mathematical artifact and does not indicate the existence of any higher metaphysical realities. So let's take just a moment to understand the basics of what dimensions are as these have taken the place in physics today of the classical ideas of the higher planes of existence. Physics today teaches that our physical reality is literally a three-dimensional geometric grid comprised of three axes, each at a 90-degree angle to the others. We start with zero dimensions, which is a point, an energy center. In physics, it is connected to the idea of the singularity as the source of all creation. In spiritual terms, the zero-dimensional point is the gateway to the divine unity from which all polarity and manifestation emerges, which ancient traditions would call the divine plane. The zero-dimensional point is literally the spiritual origin point from which physical space is created. To create the first dimension, the point moves parallel to itself to create a line. The point then moves on a new axis, creating lines between the new point and the two previous points, making the simplest two-dimensional straight line form, the triangle. The point then moves on a new 90-degree axis, which creates not only new lines between the now four points, but also creates planes on all sides of this now three-dimensional form. This makes the simplest straight-line, three-dimensional geometrical form, the tetrahedron. We have now moved from the point, to the line, to the plane, to the solid, from zero dimensions to three dimensions. If we move the point into another new axis, away from the existing three dimensions of space, we then create a fourth dimensional object. We cannot see any aspect of fourth dimensional or higher forms because our human senses are based on perceiving our three-dimensional world. 
However, it may be that our subtle organs of spiritual perception could perceive these higher dimensions or higher planes. This realization that beings with sense organs for only lower dimensions could only see fragments of higher dimensional objects was the basis for the concept of flatland by Edwin Abbott. The flatland concept shows how a two-dimensional being could only see simple two-dimensional or one-dimensional aspects of three-dimensional objects moving through the plane of the world that he perceives. The lesson, of course, is that the same is true for us as three-dimensional beings. We can only see 3D or lower dimensional sections of any fourth dimensional or higher dimensional objects moving through our world. This flatland concept of our only perceiving small fragments of higher dimensional objects moving through our world opens up new understandings of mysterious spiritual manifestations, of UFO sightings, etc. Fifth, sixth, and even higher dimensional forms are also possible and have already been identified in advanced scientific mathematics and geometric studies. When we see these higher dimensional geometric forms on a flat two-dimensional surface, they appear as a complex grid pattern, the net described in the ancient traditions. So if we add another point to the preceding series of dimensional images, a new point which would now be in the fourth dimension along an axis shift not perceivable by a three-dimensional person, this would create a fourth dimensional form of which we would only see a shadow of it in our dimension. Note that the fourth dimensional form at the end of this sequence, when shown in a lower dimensional projection as a flat 2D form, from a specific perspective looks like a five-pointed star, a pentagram inside a five-sided enclosure, a pentagon. This opens up the possibility that forms and sacred geometry used in ancient spiritual traditions are actually lower dimensional projection views of higher dimensional objects. These 2D or 3D sacred geometry patterns may actually have the hidden power to energetically connect us to higher dimensional realities. As we will see in a later episode, the pentagram form we see here, created by higher dimensional projection, is a key sacred geometry pattern for the human energy body and has been used for spiritual and magical purposes throughout recorded human history. This pentagram within a pentagon is also related to the large dodecahedron of the Earth grid we saw earlier in this episode. The dodecahedron is comprised of 12 pentagons, showing that the energy geometries of the human body also exist in a larger macro form in the energy grids of the Earth itself. This is a profound aspect of sacred geometry that geometric forms we see may just be shadows of higher dimensional forms, which most human beings have not yet developed a sense organ to perceive directly. Now that we have explored some basics of energy grids, or what the ancients called the net, as patterns which create the physical world and which manifest on multiple planes and dimensions, we can now explore the hidden tradition of the masters of the net in ancient Egypt. The ancient Egyptian tradition cultivated deep hidden knowledge and applications of the energetic net behind all physical manifestation, both in the human energy field and in the earth itself. In modern physics, it is understood that all physical matter is within an energy grid of space and time. Today, we see in physics books a representation of the net of space-time being distorted by physical mass. This net is often shown looking like a rubber sheet with a squared geometric grid on it, being distorted and stretched by an object such as a planet. This means that the net is malleable and it can be modified. Over 5,000 years before modern physics, this same energy grid, which is today called the net of space-time, was known and shown in the ancient Egyptian mysteries as the net which creates and sustains all physical existence. Learning to tap the power 
of this geometric energy grid was a key aspect of the Egyptian temple initiation. Those initiated into these mysteries were known as the masters of the net. Behind the illustrations on the Egyptian temple walls were geometric grids constructed first by the artist before creating the final illustrations we see on the completed temple walls in Egypt. These geometric grids used in ancient Egypt are known to modern Egyptologists, but with their materialistic viewpoint, many believe these grids to have only been a practical method to lay out the illustrations on the wall. They ignore the vast literature in ancient Egypt which describes this net and its magical power. There were specific terms used for different aspects of the geometric net of energy by the Egyptian initiates of the temple. Some of those terms are seen here from hieroglyphic text published by British researchers in the late 1800s. There were also direct representations of the net. For the public, the net was often represented metaphorically as a net used to catch fish or to catch birds. Initiates were shown learning to master the net and its powers. Deeper initiation teachings were also held within the net imagery. Ancient Egyptians did not refer to non-physical beings as gods or goddesses, as they are translated into English today from ancient text, but rather they referred to these beings as netters, the conscious forces of nature which the initiate learns to directly communicate with and to direct their power. Many netters were shown with animal heads, not because ancient Egyptians worshipped animals, as is sometimes falsely speculated today, but because they understood that higher divine powers manifested through specific animals. Just as today we say, clever as a fox. The ibis-headed netter was known to the ancient Egyptians as Jehute, but today we know this netter from the later corrupted Greek name, Thot or Thoth. Jehute was understood to be the being who created and taught the Egyptian temple science. The non-physical servants of Jehute were depicted as baboons casting nets into water to catch fish. Now the deeper initiation knowledge behind this was that these fish caught in the net were in actuality the souls of the dead who are unable to consciously navigate through the non-physical worlds and so became caught in the net. There is a specific teaching about this in the key Egyptian initiation text called the Book of Coming Forth into Light, which today we often call the Egyptian Book of the Dead. In this text, the initiate learns to navigate and master the net. In chapter 153, the initiate learns to consciously navigate through the net, as seen in this quote, O you fishermen, you shall not catch me in your net, you shall not catch me in your nets in which you catch the unwary, for I know the net from its upper heights to its lower depths. This remarkable initiation text details all of the aspects of the net, from the earth out into cosmological bodies, and which aspects of the net connect to specific higher non-physical beings, the netters. The true master of the net is the initiate who has learned how to navigate through the net and learn how to use the net of the living energy matrix behind everything on the physical plane to develop powers that the uninitiated consider to be magical. In ancient Egypt, the netter of death and rebirth was named Azra, a name later corrupted in Greek to become Osiris. The sacred geometry form known as the backbone of Azra in ancient Egypt was the Jed pillar which was erected each year in the raising of the Jed ceremony to connect heaven and earth. Just as the Egyptian temples connected power spots on the earth on which they were built to power spots in the heavens, and just as the human spine stands erect for us to be held between earth and heaven to act on the physical plane. The raising of the Jed pillar was the culmination of the mysteries of Azra or Osiris. 
In the ancient Egyptian document, which is today known as the Westcar Papyrus, one of the highest masters of the net in ancient Egypt is described as the Jedi, based on the Jed pillar being the backbone of Azra connecting heaven and earth. The Jedi derives extraordinary powers from using the net to control natural forces. One story in the Westcar Papyrus describes a master of the net, a high priest for Pharaoh Snofru, who parts the waters of a lake, making a part of a lake dry so that a valuable piece of jewelry can be reclaimed from its floor. Today, such miracles or magic are associated with the parting of the Red Sea by Moses, described in the Old Testament. However, these abilities to control natural forces were in fact a part of the masters of the net, initiation lineage from which Moses derived his knowledge during his training in the Egyptian temples. Similarly, the use of the staff by Moses is directly derived from the training and the use of the staff in the Egyptian temples. The staff acts as an antenna for detecting and projecting higher forces based on the designs and shapes on the staff. In the Westcar Papyrus, after the story of the priest who parts the waters for the Pharaoh, the story of the Jedi is introduced. He is said in this ancient Egyptian text to specifically have the power to restore life to the dead and to know hidden secrets of the ancient temples. The term used in recent times in the Star Wars film series of a Jedi Knight who can direct the Force thus carries a powerful subconscious resonance and attraction for people today. This is because it comes from the Hekau system of words of power in ancient Egypt, specifically the terms Jed and Jedi. The lightsaber in Star Wars sometimes resembles the form of the Jed pillar as well. From ancient Egypt, the hidden knowledge of the net spread to other cultures in the Western tradition as well. The foundation of the Western monotheistic tradition is the Old Testament, whose first book, Genesis, describes the creation of the earth from higher spiritual realms through the use of specific sacred geometry patterns. The very first statement in Genesis, in Hebrew, is Bereshit. Note that in the Hebrew original text, there are no divisions of the letters into words, just an unbroken stream of letters which can be divided and interpreted in deeper ways within the Kabbalistic mysteries. Bereshit is usually translated into English as meaning in the beginning. But in the deeper Kabbalistic teachings, it also literally means the net or God creates the net as the beginning of creation. This means that the same geometric energy net we saw previously as the core of ancient Egyptian initiation, which appears as the matrix of space-time in modern physics, is also the very first statement of Genesis, which can be accurately translated as God creates the net as the very first act of creation. The Jewish tradition is well known for avoiding visual images of divine realities. However, in the Kabbalah, there is a powerful discussion of a specific net of creation manifested by the 22 flame letters of the Hebrew alphabet, each of which is a divine power. In the modern Jewish Kabbalah, this net pattern is referred to as the 231 gates. Perhaps the best known net pattern from the Jewish tradition in modern times is the Tree of Life, an energy matrix which is a map connecting multiple dimensions, which also microcosmically manifest as a powerful energy grid within the human energy body. Methods to activate this powerful energy grid within our human energy field require real knowledge about this pattern and its effects. Rather than the inaccurate speculation which has become so prevalent in recent times. This lost knowledge was restored in modern times by a Greek Christian healer and initiate known to the public as Daskalos, who referred to the pattern as the symbol of life from its ancient Egyptian roots. 
Activating each key part of this net grid pattern requires regular practice. We will show you a simplified method where you will activate this pattern one section at a time, so that by the end of this series, you will have learned how to activate the full pattern in your energy field. Please be aware that this can be an extremely powerful practice, which can accelerate your path of personal evolution and can even beneficially transform your spiritual destiny. We will in this series refer to this powerful sacred geometry grid in the human energy field as the Grid of Life Design, or referred to in short by the acronym GOLD. This will help to remind us that this pattern is indeed linked to activating the gold energy of the saints in our energy field. The same golden radiance which is shown above the heads or bodies of the great initiates of every spiritual tradition around the world. So let us begin our activation of the grid of life design, or gold, with the activation of the gold energy surrounding our head, the seat of our consciousness. If you'd like to do the practice now, please see the companion video for this episode. Otherwise, please set an intention to come back and do the practice at a later time. And join us for our next episode, where we will reveal four of the deepest secrets within sacred geometry. We'll explore more of the core hidden knowledge of the masters of the net from Egypt and from other great initiation traditions around the world. See you then. If this video sufficiently blew your mind and you're ready for more, we definitely recommend checking out the rest of the series on Gaia using the link in the description. It's fully worth every minute.